So we now have two 15-minute breaks, uh, two 15-minute presentations before the break. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself, getting ahead of myself. Um, the first will be given by Scott Lundgren, a founding team member and current chief architect at Carbon Black. Uh, prior to this role, he was Carbon Black's vice president of engineering. And for the past several years, he's been a frequent contributor to the attack framework and OS query. Uh, he's a DerbyCon speaker and a huge believer in open source security capabilities, as well as a Windows internals geek. Scott's also a former pen tester and an offensive security researcher and school devel tool developer. Please welcome Scott Lundgren. Thank you. Can you all hear me? I dropped off the microphone. I broke it on the way up. So thank you. That was a, a really... Uh, Overly generous uh, introduction. I understand that I wrote some of that, um, so we can <laughs> drop some of the frequency. I don't know where those happened. Um, so I think I have 15 minutes, and I want to talk about uh, the future. And actually, I need the slides sorted in a second when you guys have a second. Right here. Um, and I think I want to like step back, though, for a second, because this conversation we just had is actually really relevant to what I'm going to talk about. And so I'm going to try to play it by ear a little bit and react, particularly to Sunil, your question, wherever you went, um, which really kind of calls into question, what is the, you know, the big picture future of attack? And how do we make sure that we, as a community, kind of um, provide a level of rigor um, to make it successful for all of us in the years to come? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump to a conclusion here because I only have 15 minutes. I felt like, hey, in the interest of time, instead of building up to a case, I was going to kind of throw a conclusion out there, right, to try to put a stake in the ground, mostly to uh, inspire a conversation, right? So this is less about an actionable proposal to let's go do something. I want to combine two things. I want to combine attack and I want to combine a query. Um, but it's really to inspire the conversation, less about walking away from here and saying, hey, let's go do this thing. I want to talk a little bit about, um, oh, expand on the introduction just so you know where I come from, but I'm not going to do it in the context of what I've done. You can read that. But what I think is really a neat opportunity, and thank you, Mitre, for setting this up, because it turns out each of these four bullets that are up here, I've actually worked with someone in the audience in the past, including people I didn't even know. And so I think that's, that's really neat. And so, for example, when John from Microsoft opened yesterday, and he's doing part of the trustworthy computing group at Microsoft, and I happen to have been there too, right? And so that was a neat little opportunity to find a, a bridge. Um, David, yesterday from USAA, um, spent some time uh, at the pen testing quadrant in San Antonio, Texas, and I was there too. I didn't know that. That was a neat little introduction. Um, and uh, Brian and Bryson both were at uh, the Computer Forensics and Incident Response Group uh, at Mantech just down the street. I was there too, so it's a pretty neat little group there. So then before I kind of jump into the proposal, right, I want to make sure you know where I'm coming from which is very definitely from a position of, just like all of you, right, that attack is an absolutely a hugely positive thing for our community. Right? So then I'm going I'm to propose maybe some shortcomings to kind of jump on Sunil's comments or uh, Kyle's comments um, and maybe how we can address them as the future. But it's coming from a position of, hey, I think this is great. I think this is foundational. And I think this is something that makes us all better. And since I was the knowing guy in the back doing the timeline questions, then I'll answer my own question here about timeline. I'm thinking about a multi-year view, right? The rest of this, you know, these 12 minutes is all about a kind of a what does this look like a year or two and three from now and not about what's coming in three months. And so I guess um, unlike some of the other talks, I'm going to ask that you kind of relax your mindset and think about instead of how do I oper operationalize this tomorrow, instead think about, you know, what does this look like in 2020? All right. So here's the three things I'm going to do. I'm going to assert a challenge. Um, to the attack framework over the next couple of years. The reason I have to assert it is because I don't have time to build the case, so you're going to have to take my word for it. Then I'm going to introduce OS Query for those of you that aren't familiar with it. And then finally, I'm going to propose a way to bring those two together in a conversation that we all can have collectively as a community. So here's the challenge, right? We've hit on this a lot. Um, the idea of identifying adversary tactics in TTPs, it's complicated, right? That's, that's kind of like where we all get stuck in a circle. Kyle just walked us through, hey, it's, attack is no magic bullet. Why? Because the underlying subject matter is complicated. That's just true, and it's not going to go away, and we can't abstract that away. So given the complication, it's easy for, as people come and go, right, maybe the MITRE team right here come and go over the next few years, um, or maybe just our community comes and goes, the message has a chance to get diluted, right? What attack means can be diluted. And what we don't want is the attack name to be damaged, right? Or people lose faith in what it stands for or what it means. 
and therefore we have to kind of, as a community, restart the cycle and come up with something new. There's no reason for that, right? We, can, we have something positive we can build on. And so you take that technical complexity and the fact that it is from a vendor perspective, and I'm obviously speaking here for, as, a, as a member of that community, it's a competitive marketplace and you get a lot of cross-messaging and it's a messy business, right? That's a challenge. That's what I'm asserting as a challenge. And what I would like to do is be able to provide the foundational support within attack itself and the framework and the ecosystem around it to make it strong enough to withstand that challenge. So I'm going to entirely switch gears. Right, so just pause that whole conversation, entirely switch gears, and we're going to talk about an unrelated project called OS Query. And so what I'm going to ask, just so I have a sense of the room, is what percentage of people would you say have some reasonable understanding of what OS Query is? So perfect is exactly half. So then I kind of have to do the introduction, right? Um, this slide is out of order somehow, which is great. So let's come back to it. So what is OS Query? So OS Query is an open source project. It's on GitHub, github.com slash Facebook slash OS Query. It was originally developed by Facebook, surprisingly enough, with the idea of securing facebook.com. Right, so this is the actual cloud infrastructure that is uh, backing facebook.com, obviously a huge environment. And so you know, the underlying decision at Facebook was, hey, we want better uh, manageability and telemetry across that massive fleet of servers, Linux. Uh, and we have very specific requirements. Efficiency matters. And so we're going to build it in-house. And what, became, what started as like a simple little homegrown project turns into something much bigger. We call it OS Query. Over time, it has been ported to run on Mac and uh, Windows and also even BSD. So it's cross-platform. It's open source. And then a key point here is that it's extensible. So extensibility is built into it. It itself, and I'll describe what it is in a second, you know, ships out of the box, it works, it's great. But then you all, right, or anyone has the ability to either contribute directly to the core or to extend it with your own extensions that you may or may not choose to open source. Those are kind of the key characteristics. So what is it? So for those of you who don't know, you can think about it as an endpoint telemetry agent, right? Something that runs on an endpoint on an operating system and allows you to get information about that endpoint and the interface is in the form of SQL, which is odd because there's no actual database under the hood. It's an asterisk on that, but for this conversation, it's good enough. So there's no database under the hood. Instead, SQL is the language by which you can choose to query. And so you can say things like, hey, show me um, via select statement, show me a list of all running processes across my entire fleet. You can also say, hey, show me all my open sockets. That'd be equivalent of like a net stat across my fleet. And because of the power of SQL, you can actually join those tables arbitrarily, right? Select, mix, mix and match, limit, sort, et cetera. So SQL is just a language that many of us are familiar with. It's an easy way to interface, and so it's a neat little idea. So hopefully that kind of gives you a, a sense of what OS query is. Ultimately, think about it as a way to query telemetry with an endpoint agent that's already built in. It's crop platform, and it's open source. So then the conversation. So I'm going to go back to the slide that was out of order. So forgive me for a second. One more? Great. So Brian got up yesterday. Brian got up yesterday and said, hey, uh, about the, um, the testing framework, the Atomic Red Team framework, that's really cool stuff. It's open source. It meets the same kind of, in my opinion, it meets the same kind of design goals uh, and uh, kind of spiritual or emotional tenets of MITRE itself, the attack framework itself, rather. Um, it's open. It's approachable. It's sensible. It's simple. It's, it breaks it down. And the testing framework is a really powerful part of the ecosystem. Think, I think we can agree on that. Um, I certainly agree with that. A question that I heard yesterday was, how do I even tell if my testing framework is working? Right, so what am I testing? Well, I'm testing the entirety of my defense uh, infrastructure. Right, So I might have some commercial products. I might have some open source products, some homegrown stuff. And I can run a testing framework, and I can find out whether or not things are working. And then if it doesn't, where did it break? Right, what's the, and troubleshooting that can become complicated. And so what I'm going to propose, this is the conversational part, what I'm going to propose is talking about how do we as a community kind of decide of the, uh, the elements, the TTPs within the attack framework that are actual, the ones that fit within the 70% that Brian asserted were the ones that were concrete enough to write firm detections. What would it look like to have a canonical, community-generated uh, repository of reference detections? Right? They don't have to be necessarily the ones you put in production. They may not be manageable enough. They may not be efficient enough. They may not be performant enough. They may not be right for your org for any number of reasons. But at least we have a reference set of detections that we can say, hey, we know it's possible technically to winnow down what it means to detect this technique. We know what it looks like. We can see 
um, at a high level what that looks like. We can dive all the way down to the source code it takes under the hood to see that detection, and we can say, hey, as a line in the sand, we know what that means. So this, kind of without any arrows, is what I'm calling a three-legged stool, right, is a part of a larger ecosystem. Clearly, the attack framework itself is the centerpiece, the first among equals, right, that's why we're all here. But around that, right, we've already talked about the testing frameworks, which I have in the bottom left, right, and now maybe add to that in the ecosystem a set of reference detections. So then first things first, I'm hardly the first person that thought of this. In fact, there's plenty of people that have already been doing it and doing a great job. And that was prior to my ever coming up with the idea for this talk or even having this conversation in my head. So they deserve all that credit. I'll provide three here. Um, Filippo Mutini, who's not here out of Italy, uh, has been doing this, it turns out, with OS Query itself. I'll describe that in a second. Uh, Olaf, uh, I believe, from the Netherlands, um, has done this with some Sysmon configs. Really incredible work um, with Sysmon from Microsoft. Uh, and then uh, the firm Polylogix, which I have no affiliation with of any type, um, has done some interesting work in terms of open sourcing some additional extensions to OS Query to provide uh, similar type of capabilities. So this stuff already exists. This is just some of what's already out there. What I'm proposing, right, and this is a conversation rather than, a, than a, like a direct proposal again. What I'm proposing is saying, hey, let's have a conversation maybe about standardizing as a community on what that means. Right? So these people, these individuals I just described and others are doing great work in terms of providing reference detections and making them available. That's great, but they're scattered, it's inconsistent, and it's difficult for me to map from a TTP entry in the framework directly to a reference detection. I can't find that in a centralized way. And so the conversation that I'm hoping to have right, is, um, and maybe, maybe here, right, maybe somewhere else, maybe over time. I told you about the multi-year view, right? But ultimately to say, hey, is that something we want to do? Is that something that provides value? And if it does, how do we go about doing it? And the reason why I kind of asserted the, the OS query link or as, as a ways to achieve that end was because, again, in my opinion, as an individual, um, the openness of it, the cross-platform nature of it, the fact that it's extensible, all these attributes are consistent with um, the attack framework ethos, in my opinion, and they're accessible to all of us to work on as a community that is not specific to a vendor or specific to an organization. In the uh, top right there, I have a select star from, and right? so I picked at random, I used the throw, uh, throw the dart, kind of roll the dice, I think that was the analogy, right? Um, so the roll the dice analogy, so I picked at random a technique, and you can, I and mean, I didn't put any output there because I haven't written any code, I haven't done any actual work, right? But what I did show, show you there is you can imagine a scenario where, hey, uh, I'm looking at a certain technique, I can read about it, I can understand it conceptually, I even see a whole series of uh, links to reference materials elsewhere on the internet that describe how it works, and then in one simple query, right, with code that I can read and extend and arbitrarily change uh, and send to my friends, I can see how that might be detected in the real world. I think, to Sunil's point, wherever he went, right, in my opinion, having that forcing function for a standard way to do a reference detection provides a way to segment each of the TTPs within the framework and do things that can be clearly detected, the things that fit in the 70% that Brian asserted, and things that are much more difficult to detect, supply chain, et cetera, right, that we've talked about. And that itself provides a way to um, start having conversations about further segmenting the framework itself to make it more accessible over time. How do I look at things I can detect, and how do I split off those that are probably more <coughs> conceptual, abstract? This is my last slide. So to me, if what I'm proposing has any merit, right, then what I'd like to see would be over the coming weeks or months, right, that we have some sort of a conversation about this, not me as the focal point necessarily, right, but a, a way to, as a community to have a conversation about this. I'd like to know, right, your thoughts collectively, like, hey, is this something that is valuable, does it resonate at all? But ultimately, what I hope you take away from all of it, right, is, is that the intention, the reason why I'm up here talking about it is because I want to provide a mechanism to add a little bit more rigor and structure around the ecosystem as a whole, so that we can feel confident that the attack framework is going to be here for the years to come. Right? That's, that was my opening statement. I think it's super valuable for all of us. I think we all agree with that. So how do we kind of protect it and nurture it right, so it's in a good place for years to come? And that is the entirety of the presentation.
Great. We have time for we have time for a question or two. Giving you folks a chance. So uh, I'll ask. Oh, we have one. Hey, Mike check. Um, I don't know if anybody can hear me. All right. Uh, so, awesome presentation. I think that you're going to find some parallels here. That there have been parallels throughout the day in the presentations. Um, what uh, hashtag should we use to discuss this? <laughs> That's the best question of the day. Um, <laughs> since you put me on the spot and I don't have an answer, what if I reverse it and make you pick one? You must be Amanda. <laughs> I'm enabling. I think maybe, um, I don't know, attack coin will turn it into blockchain, really hype it up, you know? That's great. That's it. All right, so, so, so it's a fair question, right? So um, I will be, since I was willing to stick myself out here on this one, right, uh, then I'll tweet out, you saw my Twitter handle, it's 529, uh, you'll see it in the presentation. I'll tweet out something with a proposal, and then we'll go from there. Is that fair? Awesome, yeah. Any other questions? <clears throat> Uh, would false positives be incorporated into a testing framework like that? Like um, downing software that we know does something like MSHDA or whatever and detonating it. Yeah, so I think the question is, is hey, if, if there's a reference detection that's generic, right, how do you build in, like, in effect, the, the common false positives at least, right, to make it, um, so uh, my opinion, right, the answer is yes for the common stuff, right? I, I'm not, in my opinion, the kind of the, Reference detection implementation is not about a production-ready system. That's what you know, vendors and other projects and homegrown stuff have the ability to do. Um, but it is about kind of making it accessible and, and uh, better for learning, right, and understanding. So I, I think, yeah, like being able to weed out the most common stuff is yes. Um, but then after that, I would say stop. And ultimately, because I want to make it, in my opinion, uh, simple and approachable for people who are new to the field and not get bogged down in a, you know, kind of a massive list. Question over there. I think a reference implementation needs or assumes that there is also a reference environment. And what I mean by that is you have monitoring on endpoint, you have monitoring on network, et cetera. Is part of your proposal that we build that as well? Or how do you, ref how do you account for a situation where maybe I don't have those tools in that environment? Are you asserting that the uh, endpoint environment is high entropy and lots of complications? Uh, that's a fair statement, yes. Uh, yeah, I told, I, uh, in a perfect world, absolutely, right? I think um, I understand the magnitude, I guess, of, of what I'm proposing in terms of the amount of work and the fact that it's not exactly obvious who is going to do it, other than apparently Brian, who's willing to just do everything. Um, so the, uh, uh, I think ideally, yes, I think I would like to tie it to something like uh, a testing framework so that there's a commonality there, right? So you could expect the testing framework to fire and the detection, of course, to work, and they would all be paired off. Uh, in terms of dependencies and environments, yeah, there'd have to be some canonical way to represent that. So, Sunil, we have time for one sure. really quick question and a quick answer. So earlier we saw EQL, uh, and I don't know if the Red Canary folks are here, but it seems to me that what uh, you're proposing, which is great, is somewhere manifested in EQL. So I would argue that maybe we can ask Canary, Red Canary to make that uh, compatible with OS Query in some sort of way. And if they're not, then I would suge suggest some sort of death match between your proposal and theirs. <laughs> <laughs> I think we just skip right to the death match. <laughs> yeah, I guess the big thing to point out is that that was an end game. We call it event query language, but I guess the biggest thing for us, which is awesome, is uh, we've been really struggling with the desire in the community to get that out publicly. So if the, if the ask is just to get something like that out there, maybe that's a start. Um, but yeah, point noted. That's awesome. Great. And, uh, so please join me in thanking Scott.